Today I'm going to review Classic Optimus Prime from 2006, along with the Fans Project G3 trailer and Fans Project DAA Commander. These Fans Project add-ons kits were sold on the heels of the success of the City Commander armor, which came out a few years ago and was one of the first successful third-party transforming toy robots. If we get this out of the way... Here is where we want the trailer for DIA Commander Armor to hitch to the back of the G3 trailer to make the V double. But as you can see, there's no, no wheels for it to ride on and no bar coming out of here that it can be used in the traditional sense to pull on the back of that. But what we do have is a little square peg hole that's normally used to connect to the back of Classics Optimus Prime. So if I put this aside and lift up the G3 trailer, you'll see that there's this odd hexagonal section under here. looks like some kind of equipment storage container. What we can do is, let's just spread these apart to get them out of the way. Grab the sides of this and disconnect it from the base, allowing us to swing all the way to the other side, revealing another set of wheels. Grab these wheels and just pry them out sideways like that. It can make its own little trailer module. Bending up this flap, this flap will fill in the gap of the trailer so it looks whole. This can peg right on to that. It's pretty simple. There we go. Now, I know that's not all in shot, so I'm going to pan the camera manually back and forth. Sorry about this. Too long for my setup here, but it's impressive. It, means it's, it really looks like a road train. It's, it's a huge thing. It's a pity they didn't make a, a armor set in the same colors as Prime's trailer, like a, a silver. That would have been really impressive. And it would have looked much better in vehicle mode together because you never normally see trailers having different colors like that. But anyway, it's, it's, it's well worth having, although most people are not going to display it this way because it's just too long. So what I want to do now is the transformation. But instead of transforming from truck to robot, which is the easy way, I'm going to turn it into robot first and then show you how to turn it back into this because I think that's a more complex thing to do. Here's Optimus Prime wearing the commander armor. For me this is really the way I like to display my Optimus. I mean, the Classics Optimus mold has held up really well over the years, but he just needs a bit of a, a power boost to stand against other figures like Megatron. For a size comparison, here's, here's uh, Hegemon next to DIA Commander. You can see that wearing the armor, Prime gets a bit of an edge, whereas before he would be up to about Hegemon's nose. Now this puts him at about a head higher, so he actually has a slight advantage over Megatron when he's wearing this gear. Here he is in comparison to Classics Megatron, his contemporary in that wave, I think. Classics Megatron is about the same size as the Hegemon figure, so again it puts Optimus about a head higher than his rival. Here he is in front of Classic's Sideswipe. Later on I'll put Sideswipe in the trailer so you can get an idea of how the cards in Classic stack up to the trailer in vehicle mode. And of course, being based on the City Commander mold, you get the BFG. I'm not much of a fan of this thing because it's really mainly because it's got nowhere to clip on to his back 
I would love it if this mould came with a peg to clip the BFG onto the back so we could store it when not in use. I have other things from Perfect Effect that will do that job, but I only have one and I'm not using it on this at the moment, so I won't show that here. So this gun can peg in as a kind of pistol to Prime's hand like that. And with this, these chambers here, it has the appearance of some kind of massive revolver, but not very effective. I mean, it still just looks like a brick. And being that the joints in Prime only rely on friction in the shoulder, and not ratchets, he normally has a very hard time holding it up. So you can see in that shot, I've got him to do it without any kind of support underneath, but in time that will just collapse. And I've hardly touched that prime. If your prime has been transformed more than a dozen times or so, I doubt that the shoulders will be tight enough to be able to hold the weight of that gun. A lot of my other copies of prime can't hold that gun. Also, if we pull that out, BFG can be transformed into an alternate mode where we slot that down and it becomes more like an extension to Prime's body instead of a, a pistol. So that would be more like one of these Transformers Prime style body extension guns like Vircons have, for example. But the extra leverage of that length makes it almost impossible. Again, I've got a very stiff prime here, so my one will just do it, but I'm, I'm amazed that that's, that's working, to be honest. I think it must be rubbing on the armour somehow. A, yeah, there we go. It was just leaning on that. That's the only way I could hold it up. The armour itself falls off the drop of a hat, so posing, any kind of posing with this cannon isn't really practical. As far as the weapons that come with Optimus are concerned, I like to keep them on the backpack, like this. It doesn't show it this way in the instructions with the DIA kit, but I think it works out better this way. If I pop that off, you can see that there's this little panel, and normally that would be folded up underneath here, but I like to leave it exposed so that it can be a holder for this. Putting him aside, what we have here is basically just the wind vane off the back, off the top of Optimus's cab, along with the smokestacks pegged into it. I don't know if the holes that that peg into are just a happy coincidence, or if someone actually designed it that way, but it turns out really well, and he can hold on to the peg for his rifle on the back, just like that. It is possible to use this setup to hold the BFG, but it's not very pretty. And given that there are other third-party products out there that can do this job, that's generally not how I store the gun. I generally just get rid of this when I put Optimus on display. To transform this into truck and trailer mode, the first thing we're going to have to do is get rid of all these pieces off of Prime. Just unpeg everything. And turn them into a huge pile of garbage. These boots can be a bit stiff, but I found on these later versions of the City Commander armor, they come off a lot easier than on the original mould. I think that has been improved over time. With the BFG, one thing to note is that you've got to pull off this plastic joiner. And then here we go, here's our pile. To transform this pile of parts into a trailer, first we get the cannon, we fold it back over on itself like this. It tabs in at either side. This is the hole, this is the peg. 
Next, we put this aside. We put this little plastic joiner aside. We'll need that later. We get the head unit, fold forward the chest, bend the head over, and then close the whole setup on itself like that. Fold these tabs out to the side. Put that aside. We get the boot. Fold this flap of the boot in. Fold this flap out. Do the same with the other boot. Fold it in. Fold it out. Then grab the two. On this side you'll see a hole. On this side a peg. Just pegs together like this. Apply a bit of force onto where the wheels are to keep it joined together. We'll put this aside. Next we want to grab his left forearm and his right shoulder. Bend this flap on the forearm up. Look for a little socket at the base of the fist on the forearm where this peg on the base of the shoulder will go. Insert the fist into the shoulder so that that peg tabs in. Bend this flap up and then over like that. Repeat the process on the next hand. So forearm, up, hole, tab, slot together, bend the flap, make it stick up like that. Get the head unit. These tabs are going to go between this section. So this is going to form the top of the trailer. It's a little bit flexible, so it's hard to get in, but you can just put your finger behind it and push that tab in. That forms one side. And push the other tab in the other side. Squeeze this section together. And there we have the top of the trailer. Next we grab the boot section. You'll see on this there are two pegs. These pegs will slot into these two holes just by gently pushing down. Take these flaps that we had left facing upwards before, push them down to lock in that part of the top. Finally you'll see there's this groin uh, waist section left over. It's got nowhere in particular to go. Pop that in the back, close up the back of the trailer. If you turn the trailer upside down you'll see that there's a slot on either side. This locking bar from the BFG slots upside down into there forming a very solid connection. That becomes the trailer hitch for joining to Optimus Prime. Turning the whole system over, finally the rocket launchers can go into place on the top of the trailer. So now it's time to have a look at how to turn Optimus here back into truck mode. I'm going to do this part as quickly as possible because I think everybody's seen this before. So let's just get to it. Bend up the arms, make them out straight, bend back these panels the whole way. This goes back, head turns around, head into cavity, bend this down, rotate the whole upper body around, make that flush, turn the shoulders so that screws are facing the top, start to bend this back into that position, fists 90 degrees down, fists 90 degrees down, legs together, knees down, feet down, feet and legs back, 
four arms bend over like that. This panel goes in here, four arms bend over, this panel in here. Now we've got the sides of the cab. Final detail, this covers up that empty space. So there we've got Optimus. Grab the smokestack gun. Peg it in. Peg on the aerodynamic foil. Grab the trailer. Slot it down. So that's the combined mode the DIA Commander if you just have those two sets. The G3 trailer can hold a variety of other classics vehicles so I'm going to put side swipe in. First put your finger underneath the barn doors at the back to the best place to grab it. Just gently pry them open. Then we have another ramp in here which is a nice touch the ramp has a second section that has a kind of ratchet so it can be positioned out as far as you like and it will stay in that position One car can fit in this section, so any of the classics vehicles, especially from the original ones like Prowl, uh, Hound, Sideswipe, Sunstreaker, Bumblebee, any one of those can fit in the back. In the front section here, we have Roller and the Command Center. So to have a look at that, we'll have to open it up. To open it up, all we need to do is get a firm hold and Pry sideways, just like the G1. So there's little flaps here also that you move up and then put the struts down to take the weight of the sides and another one at the back. And that will hold the weight of each of these doors once it's opened. As far as prime trailers are concerned, this is very similar in first appearance to a bunch of other trailers that we've got but still it has enough unique features to make this my favorite amongst all the trailers that i have so far we have this uh i don't know it's not roller but i like to just call it an auto cannon maybe from like in beast wars if i pull it up you'll see an auto morph pull the cannons forward by themselves i like that going down puts them back, up puts them forwards. It's on a ratcheted three joint arm, although the top ratchet does control the movement of the cannons. That's more like a, a cool feature than a problem, I think. This shield unit can bend forward and it can be a turret with these pins at the side acting as a kind of handle for another figure to hold. Although the pins themselves are too small for Optimus, uh, he could still leverage himself on there to get a good grip. Held underneath the auto cannon is Roller. To make Roller come out, what we need to do is grab the trailer, grab Prime, and just pull his hitch forward. And we have that powerful spring-loaded action. Let's see that again. Push Roller in till you hear the click. Pull Prime forward. It's quite powerful. It's a nice, nice feature. Roller himself is a more modern take on the classic idea of Roller. He's got 12 wheels altogether, twice as many as the original Roller, and they're all independent, which is a nice little touch. This see-through red plastic is a beautiful detail, and being that it only appears in one other small place on the trailer, I'm glad they decided to include this clear plastic instead of just painting over it, because it really adds... Uh, quality to what otherwise might be a little bit bland figure. Roller himself can be used to carry Classic Prime's rifle, like that. 
or if you prefer you can disconnect the rifle extend roller and do a minor transformation and he can hold the smokestack cannon like that and that's also posable the back section can bend so you've got the ability to to aim it upwards as you see fit A nice extra touch that Fans Project added that really probably wasn't necessary in order to sell this, but definitely uh, encouraged me to buy it when it first came out, being that this is one of the first times I'd seen this, are uh, add-on weapons for other Classics figures. So in my hand here, I have a gun that uh, is a bit reminiscent of what Hound might have carried. So we've got a gun for Classics Hound. Uh, then next... A missile launcher, perhaps that could go with sideswipe, I'm not sure, not on the shoulder, but at least he could hold it in his hand. We have a small gun, suitable for bumblebee. A shoulder mounted rocket launcher, I think that looks like it belongs with Mirage. And finally a huge chromed sword obviously for classics grimlock all of these all of my ones anyway are still on the sprue they come on this sprue which is designed to be attached into the base there are many pegs on the base and you just you pick a spot at will and slot them on so you can see it just solidly locks onto there they don't uh have any particular spot where you put it you just need to find a spot that you're happy with and join it on he can hold all of them so it's good for storage as far as other details go there isn't that much paint aside from the silver paint but we do get these nice blue sections which are perfectly matched to the plastic moldings on the roller and command module and uh, the grating on the floor panels of the middle section has a light grey wash put through it. So it, it provides a kind of separation between the walls and floor. I would have liked if the grey wash had been put on uh, all the sections, like on this grating here. I'm not sure if that was just because they thought it should be different or because uh, financial constraints. But anyway, this floor section is really beautiful to look at. It also features that paint on the ramp and it makes it stand out whereas trailers like the one that comes with masterpiece mp like mp10 masterpiece prime they are just straight out silver i would have been really happy if i had seen this on some other toys it's one of the areas where fans project are more free to excel than the big companies probably one other small feature of roller is that if you bend this section over he can pull prime's trailer whether by intention or just coincidence, I'm not sure. But in order to do it, all you're going to do is grab the trailer up like this and slot that in. Now, it kind of locks. He won't be able to turn, but at least he will be able to pull, it, pull the trailer. While pulling it, all of Roller's wheels remain in contact with the ground, so he can take the weight of it but only Prime's first set of wheels, only the first axle will roll on the ground, so the trailer's at a bit of an angle. But again, I've seen this in real life where tow trucks pull a trailer and not all of their wheels touch the ground. So I think that um, it's plausible that that could happen as well. The trailer has one more secret to reveal, a camouflage mode where it will literally disappear in front of your eyes. To engage this mode, split the trailer slightly, grab one of these flaps on the roof. These flaps form a locking mechanism that stop the whole thing coming apart. Put the trailer back together and then proceed to unfold every other flap. 
So there's a lot of these things. And there you go. It's gone. I know what you're thinking. Unbelievable, isn't it? Disappeared right in front of your face. Where's that damn trailer gone? I could have sworn I gave it to that roller. Roller! So when it comes down to it, should you get Classics Optimus Prime? I think if you haven't already got it by now, it's going to be pretty difficult to get at a reasonable price. But there are plenty of KO options available for $15 or $20. They're all over the internet, relatively easy to get, so you could pick up one of those. The G3 trailer. The G3 trailer is essential. I don't think that there is another trailer that I would recommend more than the G3 trailer. I have other classic scale trailers by BTS, but as far as the quality, build quality and overall finish go, nothing compares to the G3 trailer. The G3 trailer is currently the definitive prime trailer that you could get, so definitely I recommend picking up this. If you can get it at 60 get it at 60. If you have to pay 100, I still think at 100 it's worth it. I paid, I think, $85 for it at the time, but if there was no other way, I would go higher now, because that's how much I, I love this. As far as the DIA Commander armor is concerned, I don't think that it is any longer worth picking one of these up at the price that a real one goes for. I mean, these things, the real ones, are getting quite expensive now and when you compare it to the KOs you can get you can pick up a KO of the DIA Commander Armor for $35 or $40 I think stick with the KO it's not worth spending aftermarket dollars on one of these trailers especially when you consider there are so many repaints of the City Commander Armor that if you have one of those other repaints it will probably do so that's my review thanks for watching